Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to cover two major things. One, the basic bony anatomy of the humerus. And then once we have a grasp on that, we'll go into discussing how you determine if it is a left or a right humerus. So remember that the humerus is the proximal bone of your arms. Okay? It's the bone that attaches directly into the shoulder joint. And the part of the humerus that attaches into the shoulder joint itself is the head of the humerus. And so one of the things you need to get very familiar with finding, and this will help when we do left and right, is locating the head of the humerus. It's this rounded part right here. And keep in mind that the head of the humerus is going to have to point toward the torso because that head of the humerus is what ins inserts into the shoulder joint. Now the humerus has what we call tubercles. There's a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle. The rule is, is that the greater tubercle is always opposite the side of the head of the humerus. So once you locate the head, the greater tubercle is just on the opposite side right here. It's the most lateral of them. And then the lesser tubercle is right in the middle, right in the middle between the greater tubercle and the head. And also if you look at where the lesser tubercle is, it's a little bit beneath the greater tubercle if we're standing in perfect anatomical position, okay? Now, the intertubercular groove, that implies we have a groove between the two tubercles. And so if we find the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle, this groove that kind of runs between them, which extends about down this far, that's the intertubercular groove, okay? So that pretty much covers the major structures uh, that is on the proximal side of the humerus. If we go down a little bit further, about midway down the bone, we have what's called the deltoid tuberosity. This can actually be seen from both the anterior view and the posterior view, and if you have a chance to feel this on a model, you should be able to run your finger down it and feel this bump. Okay, I'll just mention this right now, the deltoid tuberosity is going to be where the deltoid muscle actually attaches onto the humerus, which is why it gets its name like this. Okay, Now for the distal part of the humerus. We've got actually five structures we're going to look at. The first ones I want to look at are the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. So if you look at this, we have the humerus kind of uh, broadens out at the bottom relative to the shaft of the bone. And this broadening out right here on the same side as the head of the humerus, that is the medial epicondyle. Okay, so this bulge out here on the side that is on the same side as the head of the humerus is the medial epicondyle. We can actually see that on both sides here. So notice the medial epicondyle is on the same side as the head of the humerus, which makes sense because the head of the humerus has to be on the medial side because it has to attach to the torso. On the other side of this, we have, of course, the lateral epicondyle. Notice that these bulges out of the two of them, the medial one is actually larger. So we can say that the medial epicondyle seems to be a little bit larger than the lateral epicondyle. We also have these three ridges right here. And I'm going to come back to this in a few minutes when we talk about left versus right. These three little ridges right here are very important to be able to identify. Um, and you can see them only on an anterior view. So see how there's three little things right here? The one that's most medial, or we could say closest to the medial epicondyle, this one is called the trochlea. And really for the trochlea, we can see it as the medial of the three ridges right here, and it kind of extends around to the uh, the back side of the humerus. All of this is actually the trochlea, although generally you'll see it labeled right here on the anterior view, okay? Now, the other of the ridges that's the most lateral, this is called the capitulum, okay? And being able to recognize these three ridges, that is the capitulum, this one in the middle, and the trochlea, is very important for determining left and right on the humerus. We'll come back to that. The very last thing I'm going to cover is what's called the olecranon fossa. This can only be seen on the posterior view of the humerus. It's one of the only things that can be seen on the posterior view. This groove right here, this basin that you can actually feel very prominently when you actually touch the humerus, this is the olecranon fossa. As we'll see, this is where the olecranon process of the ulna sticks in and sort of forms the elbow joint. But you can only feel the olecranon fossa on the posterior side, okay? And those are the major aspects of the humerus that I wanted to cover in this video. The last thing is how to determine left from right. 
So here's what you need to do. You need to be able to locate two things. The head of the humerus, and at least be able to see these three ridges right here, okay? The rule is, is that these ridges, to be in an anterior view, have to be what you can see, okay? You have to be able to see these three ridges, and then you know it's an anterior view. If I had the humerus like this on the right side, uh, I can't see those three ridges. So therefore, this is not an anterior view, as we see here. So if I can see these three ridges right here, then I have an anterior view of the humerus. And then once I know I have an anterior view, I look up here on the proximal side and see which direction is the head of the humerus facing. Well, remember that the head of the humerus has to face the torso, right? It has to face the torso because it has to attach to the shoulder joint as we see right here. And so if the head's right here, that has to point towards the torso, so the torso is all over here on the right side of my screen. And so since I'm looking from the patient's perspective, this has to be the right humerus. And we can even see that in this image right here. Okay, So when determining left and right, find where these three ridges are, and if you can see them, you have an anterior view. If you can't see them for whatever reason, you actually have a posterior view. Okay and that's important to recognize. But once you see these three ridges, look to see which direction the head of the humerus faces, and that's how you know which humerus you have. And so for example, if you had an arrow pointed at this structure right here, where my mouse is, we would call that the right capitulum. Or right here, this would be the right greater tubercle. And so on most of these bones, left and right is very important. All right, hopefully this made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.